Are you making financial mistakes that could cost you thousands of dollars? Even small financial errors can have long-term consequences. Just like compound interest can work for you in a positive way, small errors financially can compound over time and devastate you financially. So join me today as we look at five costly financial mistakes and how to avoid them on Simply Money. Mistake number one, not having an emergency fund. This is so fundamental. This is so important. Having an emergency fund saves you from going back in debt or saves you from adding to your debt. We know life is going to happen. You're going to have air conditioners go out, hot water heaters blow, car break down, medical bills, things happen, life goes on, life happens. You may go a while without something happening, but it's going to happen. It is not if it's going to happen, it's when it's going to happen. The longer you live, the more you understand emergency things happen. And when I say emergency, they're not life or death necessarily, but things happen that need to be taken care of. They're surprises. They're unexpected. They're not planned. So we need to set some money aside to handle that. Make sure you have an emergency fund with three to six months of living expenses. If you lose your job, how are you going to survive? If you don't have three to six months of living expenses, I'm not talking about going out to eat. I'm not talking about vacations. I'm not talking about entertainment. I'm talking about taking care of your food, your shelter, your transportation to get another job. Those types of things are essential. Those are your bills, your mandatory bills. You should have three to six months because if I lose my job and I don't have any money, how am I going to feed myself? How am I going to pay for my rent or my mortgage? Those are important things. But more than that, you need to be prepared to deal with that so you can be not as stressed to focus on finding the next opportunity and overcoming that. Building an emergency fund is essential and mistake number one people make that cause them dearly because they go in debt and then they're back in the cycle of debt. Mistake number two to avoid is living beyond your means. You don't have an emergency fund because you don't have a budget. You need to get on a budget. This is a problem because the dangers of spending more than you earn, including the accumulation of debt and inability to save for the future. This is something that you have to focus on. An emergency fund helps you, but without a budget, you'll never even establish a good emergency fund. Get on a budget and get out of the cycle of living paycheck to paycheck. Getting a paycheck is important, but you should be in a place where if you are still on a paycheck, if it doesn't hit your bank on the date it's supposed to, something happens, you're not devastated. You can survive. You can use your emergency fund until they get it figured out and get it deposited. Even if it's only a few days, there are people who are dying. That's why this is so big now. You see it all the time. Yeah, you're Paycheck is Friday, but it'll hit your bank on Thursday because that helps us. Oh, now I'm ahead of it, but we spend that as soon as we get it. Get on a budget. Stop living beyond your means. Check out the video I've done on setting up a budget and getting yourself on a plan so you can break that cycle. It is so important. Don't fall for this live for the moment mentality without planning for the future. When I'm on a budget, I am so free because I know exactly what I can do. I don't have to question, hey, you want to come out to eat? Yep, because I know I have the money because it's in my budget. Hey, you want to go golfing? Yeah, no problem. Let's go. I don't have to worry about, oh, is this going to mess up this week's pay? Is this going to mess up this week's bills? What do I have coming due next week? I don't have to worry about it because my budget says I have this much money to go do what I want, whether it's golfing, traveling, eating out. Whatever it is you do, it should have a budget. Track your expenses and, pri and prioritize your needs over your wants. Remember that needs over wants. We often confuse our wants with needs. Oh, I need that so bad. No, you don't. You don't need that. You want it. Do you have it in your budget? No. If you want it that bad, put it in your budget and save up for it. Mistake number three, not investing for the future. We have such an opportunity in our society to invest. There are so many tools, so many opportunities. You can get in the stock market, and I encourage you to do index funds. 
ETFs, diversify. You can get into real estate. You can do things. You can buy bonds. You can do many things to help invest your money. There are a lot of videos on our channel on how to invest, what types of investments, how they work, all that stuff. Get yourself educated. We'll talk about that in a minute. But there is the important step of investing in your future. And don't forget, you cannot rely solely on savings. Because if your savings account is earning interest, I guarantee you it's lower than inflation. Right now is the making of this film. Interest at the banks are five, five and a half percent. Interest was six percent. That's why they offered that. Ten years ago, you couldn't get 0.01 percent interest because inflation was so low. They were, the banks weren't giving interest because banks are using the money to invest to make money. And they'll give you a little peasly piece of that depending on the market. So please use a savings account for emergency funds, for bucket items. You know, I'm saving up for a vehicle. I'm saving up for a trip, whatever. But future investments should be invested where they're outpacing inflation. Check out this video on outpacing inflation. This is what we're about here at Simply Money, educating you. We have a mall set up. Check out the link in the description. All things financial, how to budget, budgeting apps, how to get insurance, how to find deals on this, how to buy a house. We have different stores for different things, and we have a community to work together. We're here to help you with all things financial. Number three, investing for your future. Number four mistake, carrying high interest debt. Please, I'm pulling out my hair. Stop using high interest debt. I don't like any debt. But if you're going to use debt, please get out of that. I get credit card offers in the mail almost daily. 19 to 29% interest. And I know you're saying, well, I'm going to pay it off at the end of the month. Says the person who doesn't have an emergency fund, they're going to go buy that new thing for $1,000, but they're going to pay it off at the end of the month before the interest starts kicking in at 19 to 30% interest. Guess what? If you can't be disciplined enough to set up an emergency fund, if you can't be disciplined enough to save until you have the money to buy what you need so bad, then you are not going to have the discipline to pay off a credit card and you're not a credit card person. Leave them alone especially those high interest ones. High interest debt kills you. I'll use an example. Even low interest can kill you because you're missing not only the interest you're paying now, but all that money and what it could have done if it had been invested. You've lost the ability of investing power of years. I'll use a vehicle for an example. I have an $800 vehicle payment. I'm paying 6% interest. Make a great deal. I got 3% interest. Regardless, those five years you're paying on that, what if you only had a $400 payment and you could use that other $400 for those five years and invest it and then leave it alone? Don't add anything else. You have all the years in the future of that money growing. That's missed opportunity that that debt, that that payment costs you. One of the greatest things, I want you to stop right now. Just think, think about every debt you have credit cards, student loans, vehicles, even your mortgage if you have one. Think of every debt you have. Imagine if you didn't have any of that, what it would feel like week to week. Visualize that. Think about what it would feel like to get a paycheck, not have to pay credit cards, to not have to pay a car payment, to not have to pay a mortgage. And if you were able to invest all that money, how fast that could grow into a huge sum. And that is the missed opportunity that carrying debt causes. Mistake number five, neglecting financial education. Now, I may be preaching to the choir because you're here, and that's a good sign that you're looking and learning, but we need to be consistent. This is a problem of being financially illiterate in our society. We don't teach it in our schools. We don't teach kids how to budget. We don't teach kids about compound interest. We don't teach kids about debt and its use and its dangers. We don't teach kids about investing. And then we grow into an adult and we don't know how many people I've talked to. They'll ask me financial advice and I'll 
ask them like, what are you invested in? They're like, oh, it's in my 401k. That's not an investment. That's like saying, what are you invested in at the bank? A CD? Do you have, you know, savings account? No, I, I have it at Chase Bank. No, the bank is just the tool, the instrument, the institution holding it. The CD would be the investment. The 401k is just the tool being used by the institution, whether it's Fidelity, Schwab, whoever it is, the 401k is just the basket they're holding it in. Are you in a target date fund? Are you in an ETF? Are you in a mutual fund? What are you invested in? Do you even know? Get educated on what those are. There's no excuse. YouTube is full of information. As I mentioned earlier, our website, we have a mall that has all sorts of educational tools. Listen to podcasts, read books, whatever your style of learning is, the tools are out there. Join our community and begin to learn from others who have like-minded ideas about finances and how you can become educated. Don't fall into the pitfall of avoiding your, bettering your financial knowledge. So those are your top five costly financial mistakes, and we have covered that. You need to make sure that you have an emergency fund, that you're not living beyond your means, that you're investing, that you're not carrying high interest debt, and that you're not neglecting financial education. This is so important, and you're achieving your financial success because even neglecting these small things that can make small impacts over long term, over long term, those small impacts grow into huge consequences. So take control of your finances. Thank you for joining me on Simply Money. I invite you to hit the like and subscribe button and leave us some comments on how we can better help you reach your financial goals. And we'll see you next time on Simply Money.